uh, that Israel had excessively use of force and in the response was disproportionate to what the uh, Hamas had done. The, what uh, many delegates were insisting, uh, especially delegates from the Middle East, was a more stronger uh, language than was in the, uh, in the previous document. A language that would encompass, uh, you know, uh, and encompass uh, in their view and, and show them uh, a deeper magnitude than what the international community were, were portraying. And that was where the, the point of argument was. But eventually it was agreed that we should, should not open up the debate on what was already agreed and that the language that was in the, the Palestine document was proportionate and it should remain as such. But uh, just condemnation, does it mean anything just coming out and, do, and condemn? Because we've seen different documents coming before, even from UN, condemning, and then the rest goes on as usual. Uh, nothing still happens, even that. Uh, uh, the attacks continue, uh, people keep continue losing lives, and at the back of these judgments? No, uh, I think it, it is, these condemnations are important. These condemnations are important because it, uh, to the country that is being condemned, uh, it is uh, a warning to them to go slow or to t t take note that uh, they are being watched uh, there is concern from the international community and others to what they are doing, and they should, uh, you know, reduce or take take care of or, 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 or be careful that they should proceed in the manner in which they are proceeding. Uh, this it is important because uh, you cannot just use violence against uh, the, the country you're condemning. You cannot call the international community to use force against them in an unjust manner. So These several. The, the, the condemnation to international fora like this, the condemnation through other international fora like this, then eventually, if need be, eventually if need be, you can justify use of violence or use of force rather by saying that we have given you so many opportunities, we have raised to you, given you so many questions that you should stop, 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 you're going to listen. That's why now we're taking the next step. All right. Let's also now to speak about uh, the Kampala Declaration, where you also discuss issues concerning food security, fight, tackling hung hunger and climate change. How, uh, moving away from uh, the bigger co congregation that you had, uh, going to practical terms, what exactly is going to be done to make sure that what you discuss in the Kampala Declaration is really achieved or usually the process begins right away? There, there will be a secretariat, a world ongoing secretariat, under the leadership of President Museveni. And uh, we, we are determined like, that our documents should be uh, enter, uh, or refused into uh, other documents. Just a few months ago, we were in Dubai on the climate change, uh, the annual climate change uh, meeting that took place in uh, in Dubai. This is the oh, annual yeah. COP, yeah, COP, uh, and, and uh, it, it, it was a very important meeting, and hence, uh, uh, even the Kampala Declaration on Climate Change, the, we wanted to put it inserted in there. So this particular document, outcome document from on, on uh, uh, Kampala Declaration of NAM, we hope that at some time it will be able to be fused into, into the next COP. The issue of food security is very important. Every country is concerned and is top of the agenda on the issue of food security. They were, uh, affected by climate change, climate by, like, affected by, by wars. And what we're saying is that we should exp share experiences. We should uh, on, uh, on issues of food security and, and, and ensuring that all our citizens have uh, enough uh, food and nutrition to be able to, to, to survive. But what is important amongst NAM, in the issue of NAM, is that NAM uh, uh, makes a double effort amongst its members in the issue of food security, as opposed to when we're talking about at the UN, about global food security. No, but Honorable, uh, as you hold a secretariat in Kampala, and you have these members, over 120, over 120 uh, coming together, what will be exactly done by these member countries? Are you going to have uh, a common funding model to make sure that these achieve these uh, declarations? For example, food security, tackling hunger, are you going to, what are you exactly going to be doing to make sure that these don't remain on paper, uh, you fight hunger in your terms, and we practically achieve this? Each country is, is, is uh, individually responsible for its food security. What is important 
is that every country budgets enough fund within its, its uh, uh, national budget in terms of food security. What is important is that we should all be able to have access to, to science, modern technology, in terms of being able to avail people uh, the kind of crops, the kind of seeds that is resistant to disease, is resistant to, to climate change, to ensure that uh, in, 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 well, even in, in terms of the production, there is sufficient, uh, there is a sufficient food that can be produced in spite of the, 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 uh, the other factors. Ladit, I can bet that this will not have, uh, at a larger extent made, be, be made because you have a previous declaration, like for example the Maputo declaration, you know what's happening with the uh, funding to agriculture. Even in our own case as Uganda, we are not giving enough funds to the issue, uh, to the sector of agriculture. So how do you tell me that yes, there will be co total commitment in fighting hunger and poverty uh, when even you cannot even fund adequately the sector like agriculture? I think that uh, any country that uh, does not uh, ensure that there's enough food, and uh, not only food, but nutritious food for its citizens. It's a country which is being very irresponsible. In Uganda here, the president has continuously said, it's on record, and I wish you could pull out this on record on today's, uh, in today's story, when I'm showing this story, that it's only an idiot, a real idiot, that can die of hunger in Uganda. He said this, and I'm sure you had this. But aren't we having people dying of hunger? And, and, and those are idiots, because there is enough food in Uganda. If you work hard, there's land in Uganda, the climate is right in spite of climate change. Uh, climate change, if you make a double effort to make sure that you go, go out in the morning, you tilt your land, you, see, you plant the seeds, you maintain your, your plantation, surely you cannot uh, go, go. Surely, okay? How did you, did you fail then to get, to get food? Yes, I agree. But uh, you know, as you members, member countries, you are sitting as governments and committing as uh, member countries, delegations from member countries, you, uh, and you are making commitments as governments who are supposed to fund, who are supposed to put these allocations, and we don't see this happening, even, even from the Maputo Declaration. So how do you confirm and assure the public that, yes, this time around, we are going to commit funding to agriculture, fighting, uh, tackling effects of climate change when things are not happening even from the previous declarations but uh, but are people are people going hungry are people going hungry they, they might not be sufficient uh, food because of climate change and other factors but in in the, in the majority in the majority only a very small amount of people do go hungry we have people like a place like Karamoja where the, the uh, environment is uh, and the climate and the soils are, are terrible that's uh, that's understandable in, in the case of uh, case of, of Karamoja but in the, uh, the the rest of the country uh, where, where is the the soil is is good uh, the the climate is good with lush luscious atmosphere I, I don't think that uh, that can be a challenge in other countries also so, in other countries also, it is just a question of motivating people, encouraging people to go and utilize the land more efficiently, giving them the right seeds uh, that are resistant to disease, that, that uh, is resistant to drought, and getting get what they need to do their job. Mm -hmm. And I think in the case of Uganda, we have not, not, not failed. Otherwise, we would have a more deter 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 deteriorating situation than in Karamoja. And then, uh, as you talk about non-aligned, uh, you say these countries, uh, no, no longer, you as member countries of NAM, I'm um, looking at also the funding model, when you have to even borrow these funds to fi either finance the budget or even to uh, run the, some of the activities and programs you implement as countries, member countries. How will this effect, how will this effective be implemented when you still have to go and seek these loans and uh, won't you also fall into a trap of going to the demands and uh, conditions of these countries that are giving these loans as member countries? I think um, one of the, the reasons why we meet in such a forum is to send a message to these international institutions and other countries uh, about how we feel uh, as, uh, as members of NAM. They are in the, all countries are not equal, and all leaderships are not, not, not equal. But we try and encourage them. We t when we are together in, in NAM, we are, we, f we are stronger in terms of NAM, and we can send a strong message as, as, as NAM. That, uh, that you know, 
this bullying attitude should stop. These uh, intimidations, sanctions, uh, lectures on uh, uh, to us should come to an end. And Uganda has managed to prove that we can we can tell those people to stop. How many times have President Museveni told them he would not accept their lectures? How many times have they threatened us and we told them to go to hell with their lectures? How many times have they told us they'll cut off their money? You said, keep your money. We are here today and we are moving on. So if we are, what we are saying is if all the countries in Nam can stand up against these institutions, against these countries, we will then have a, a, a future where we can be treated as equals, where we can be able to be able to, to sit on the high table and determine the future of the world, being able to talk in the, in the, in the, and, and, and create a new international world order where all sovereign, sovereign and independent countries can be respected. I want also to move to the, G, the outcomes of the G77, but uh, before that, uh, for you as uh, government officials, as the host, uh, hotels and the like, uh, it felt like... Uh, it, it, a big occasion for you to have these delegations, but for the common person, many of them still felt detached from this reality, like we saw in Chogam. At least many of them felt embraced. They, many of them embraced the, the Chogam meeting, but this we had two big delegations. The first, for example, Uganda hosting the first, uh, the first African country to host G77. But you surely feel that uh, the, the nation, the local people, didn't were not part of this. You didn't feel it. But many people felt it. Uh, I was in uh, several places, and everybody whom I met would thank me and congratulate me and con congratulate President Museveni, congratulate this government for a fantastic organization of um, t these two summits. I was in uh, t several, different, several places uh, uh, the day before yesterday and, and yesterday, and every time somebody saw me, people, everybody, time and one inch saw me, said, well done, congratulations, Minister. In fact, it became very embarrassing. Let me tell you why they were congratulating it became, it became you. Very embarrassing. Let me tell you why they were congratulating you, because as uh, days to the organization of these uh, two summits, you were active on in infrastructure developments, uh, trying to see that you find the, the city to look a better city for the following find the Gintalis. But they were also asking, why don't we have this kind of commitment in all other sectors, in all other services? They, 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 they didn't tell me that. What they're congratulating me was not about the roads. They were very clear to me that well done for a good job in hosting. That's the word they're using. In hosting NAM, NAM, NAM. Because there were no even, security even, lapses. <laughs> even the waiters. Even waiters, uh, was, when I was leaving, would thank me and say, uh, Mr. Minister, thank you very much for a job well done. How were you as government able to pull off, uh, pull off this? Uh, if they were thanking you, yes, uh, you were, the big interest were able to come in here and also you were able to feed them. <laughs> you had a budget of uh, over 53 billion shillings, but in your terms, how much do you spend as government and how were you able to uh, put this together? It will come out. It will come out uh, in the next. Uh, the, the how much exactly did we spend, or how much was needed to to do that the job? It will come out uh, e e eventually. Uh, we uh, we as a country uh, used our civil servants, our county officers, and our expertise. Uh, to make sure that they prepared the budgets. It was not prepared by President Museveni, not prepared by the cabinet. These, the technical people are the ones who give us the amount of money that is needed for this job, and only from the result of the technical people did we be able to go to parliament and have, have this, this, this budget sanctions. What you should understand is that uh, ministers, Mr. President Museveni, and even MPs are not te te technical people to determine and give bills of bills of quantities. These are done by, by experts who are within the government, who, and we, our job is just to I implement this job. So we are eventually the accountability will come out within the next few months. But also on top of, of, of the amount of money we spend, we had friends who helped us uh, give us some equipment. We had uh, countries like. Uh, uh, countries uh, like India, India gave us buses, India gave us, gave us uh, tractors, gave us ambulances, uh, Serbia gave us a lot of, of, uh, of uh, Serbia gave us what? Gives, gave us a lot of flags uh, which uh, uh, were, were around. So uh, we got a lot of assistance from, 
from uh, from friendly. There are companies that help us. MTN, Airtel. There's a company in uh, called Kingdom, uh, in uh, and Cat Cat Catfix in the UAE that help also give us small things. You know, so, some people are saying that uh, government was able to take away some vehicles from some of the ministers, um, some of the permanent secretaries. That was, and work was still ongoing within government agencies. If they were, the PSCs were working, the ministers were working, and maybe some of them were also looking at uh, cutting down the cost of uh, public administration and reducing the number of vehicles uh, that we use as in public service. That, yes. The, the beauty of this, uh, uh, and amongst, behind the scene, the success that you people don't want to publish, and I want this published. Okay, is the sacrifice that ministers, the sacrifice that permanent secretaries, the heads of departments, and all the government officials that are entitled to vehicles, they they sacrifice and handed off those vehicles for the purpose of hosting and availing uh, vehicles to our host, uh, to our, 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 our visitors, without the need for us to purchase new vehicles. China, for example, China gave us 70, 70 vehicles, 70 vehicles for, for this uh, uh, event. But the 70 vehicles were not enough. Because the, normally when you have a head of states, you have a convoy of about seven to eight cars. But I am so happy that my colleague ministers volunteered and gave away their one vehicle. The one vehicle that they would not use, so, and, but they would use alternative transport to go to work, using their own, own parcel. You know, as, as head of departments, head of departments, public secretaries, use their one vehicles, okay, and sacrifice that for the purpose of hosting the NAM. I would thank. I want to, I want to thank them and bravo for them and all those who sacrificed for now. As you're boasting about this, I have to also remind you that after Chogam, we saw even a, vice, a sitting vice president take, being taken to Luzira over accountability issues arising from the preparation for Chogam. We hope not to see the same after the accountability comes uh, for this Choga, for this NAM and Gisa Seven. Our position is very clear in the government. Okay, anybody who chooses. To break the law, anybody who, used to, who chooses to be corrupt and engage in corrupt in uh, uh, taking public funds or stealing public funds, should be take, take full responsibility for the abuse of that office. Full responsibility. That's the position of government. There's zero tolerance in corruption. This is unacceptable uh, uh, ordinarily, and therefore, if in this uh, num, anybody, including me. Uh, if I'm found to have taken public funds, okay, or squandered any f sort of money, even a one penny, okay, they should carry their own cross mm. and take their full responsibility. In fact, if it's, if it's a minister, that minister should not waste government time and just resign. If it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a public officer, they should also resign. And, and if the, the court, uh, they're taken to court, they should then, then face the consequences. Yes. Because what happened in Nam, uh, lessons were learned what happened in Chogam. Lessons were learned in what happened in Chogam. So we do not expect a repeat <laughs> to have taken place. If you, if you surely, after Chogam, if you, you again do the same or, or worst thing that had happened in Chogam, then really you, you have not learned any lessons and the penalty should be twice. All right, uh, let's move on to G77 plus China. Uh, that group of 77, even though they are more than 77 now. Uh, yes, the president was uh, talking about prosperity, doing uh, economic activities, but in real terms, what is going to be in the, uh, now if you even have the opportunity that he's the chairman, uh, for the next one year and Uganda hosting this for the first time in Africa uh, what is going to be uh, the drive what is going to be the agenda for these member countries as they try to advance uh, these commitments I think that uh, if you look at the objectives and uh, of and the, the basis on which numbers was created it's not just to be non-aligned mm, amongst many things is to do, to reverse the arrogancy of the Western and imperialist countries on uh, the Nana Alliance and the South-South uh, countries under the President's leadership. You see, that's why the, the, the timing uh, of President Museveni to be the chair of NAM and G77 is very important. This is President Museveni, with, with a revolutionary leader, with enormous experience in, 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 in being the president, enormous experience in peacekeeping, enormous experience in leadership in, in the region, highly respected for his views. The drive here is, 
that Nam sh should now take his rightful place in the Naish community. Nam should be seen visibly, like other inter uh, international organizations. Nam should be heard on on matters of international and world order. Nam is determined to tell the international community that we are here and we need things like uh, access to uh, better access to international financing, better access to market and, and uh, markets and technology, which is very important in. Uh, uh, important to us. We are determined that there should be a reform in the United Nations Security Council so that Africa have permanent seats in the Security Council with veto rights. We also wish that South America and countries of Asia should have also permanent seats in the Security Council. We cannot continue with the old fashion, the uh, unfair and historical injustice that the Security Council is a club for a few countries. We will also continue, President Musan also is determined that the international, the Western countries, who continue intimidating, threatening, uh, 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 damn countries, that enough is enough. The time for lecturing is finished. The time for intimidating us and threatening us has come to end. We need now to accept the international world order that we are all equals. We might not be equal financially. We might not be equal, uh, you know, uh, by armed uh, capacity, but. In order for the international and world order to be stable, and the world order to be peaceful, and the world order to be successful, it is, it is, it is uh, imperative that yep. there is equality. Mm. There is a sense of equality and, uh, and respect Venice. to each other in the national community. You know, as you do this, I have a feeling that uh, I would want to, as you push this agenda, one would want to see this, yes, if it's a, that, that total commitment, a num member countries also coming up, like we've seen UN, we've seen uh, AU, uh, whenever hap something happens. For example, uh, during uh, elections, post-elections, or even uh, during the conduct of these elections, we've seen many African countries, uh, even away from Africa, when, whenever there is an election, there is violence, there is even post-election violence. We never see this, uh, this voice coming from this global south. We never see these voices coming to condemn either the sitting governments or the, the manner in which the democratic uh, irregularities happen the way they happen. But also whenever we see countries uh, having these inter- uh, not, not even inter, but uh, also cross-border uh, differences when other countries are crossing borders, other countries are even threatening aggression on the other. We don't ever see voices coming from this so-called powerful blo block called NAM. You see, <laughs> the lines of NAM... I'm saying that is because, no, no you know why I'm no saying that? Uh, for they, example, they... Azerbaijan was handing over to you. Uh, we never saw uh, these member countries from Azerbaijan uh, coming out strongly say this is happening here, uh, this, is, this should be the way to go. We never see this happening. That's my well, concern. What, what, what did you expect Azerbaijan to say? That was, that's my concern. We never, we never hear these voices coming strong as a block. You want this, you want now to have you and... Uh, you have let me tell you, let me tell you. You know, you people, you are the big admirers and you, 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 your mouth drip with saliva when you hear about Western countries, about America and the British. Your, your mouth drips with saliva. There, there, there are nine ways of, of, of skinning a, a cat. And you should also respect your culture and your ways of doing things. You know, <laughs> it, 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 when it, a neighbor's house listen, is catching listen, fire, listen, you don't keep listen, quiet. Listen. We, amongst ourselves, okay, condemn, criticize, and, 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 uh, and, and, and uh, advise each other amongst these head of states. They have frank, truly, conversations amongst themselves, and uh, those conversations are there. The difference is we know the right forum, the right forum to and how to approach each other as African countries, how to approach each other as Islam members. Well, you know, this arrogancy of the West of calling the press and then say, pointing a finger, wagging a finger, that Uganda, you should stop this, remove this uh, bill on, uh, this uh, statute on uh, LBGDQ in public, in the front of the press. But even uh, uh, electoral practices. Uh, respect us, please. Why did you call me quiet and say, you know, you ask the president, there's this matter we are concerned about, and I'm sure that we, we can do this thing. Then I will listen to you. But for you to just wag my finger at me in public, hey, Sebo, I'm also the president of a country. As much as the president of a country, I can accept that nonsense. Hence, resistance.
That's why we're saying that we, we cannot continue as NAM members where people keep pointing fingers at us, wagging fingers at us, threatening us and intimidating us. We want to be treated as equals and as colleagues. You call me and tell me, my brother, this is how things should be done. My brother, how do you If we, we take your method of doing things, each time a, pre a minister they will do anything wrong in this government, President Museveni will come to the press and call the press, Minister Oriam did this, 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 this wrong, Minister this, 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 this wrong, then how will you run the government? There will be chaos. So we criticize, condemn, advise our, ourselves in the right fora, amongst ourselves, but not in public, as, as the Western countries do. Okay, and also the issue of uh, uh, you, one of the one of the other issues you discussed ab about was uh, the issue of uh, extra ex territorial and uh, aggression, external aggression, but also tackling uh, terrorism. But we continue to see these things happening. How are you going to? take on this uh, for example we even bring it down to you as uh, you had because you had a side, a side meeting the guard meeting we've seen that the region is not stable at all uh, case in point we know what's happening within Ethiopia and uh, Somalia over Somaliland we know what is happening between Rwanda and in Burundi even up to now more than two weeks uh, we see the border still closed between Rwanda and Burundi but also the issue of DRC this issue of uh, territorial independence is key, and we are going to watch the chairmanship of President Museveni and you as the guard members. Uh, how is this going to be handled under this, uh, as, as Uganda takes on the mantle as the chairman of NAM, but also you are internally as a guard? I think um, conflict, uh, this. Uh, Conflicts are diversionary and not uh, necessary. Um, the diversion is not necessary, as I said, because I think uh, we should spend more time on the issue of uh, trying to transform our countries, improve the lives of our people, increase trade and, and, and get more tourism in our country. But in this particular case, unfortunate cases, I think uh, there is uh, regional mechanisms that are, are, are working to try and address and find the cause of these conflicts and see how they can be handled without uh, it turning into armed conflict, but in it being dealt with and addressed diplomatically and politically. Recently we had a meeting in the State House at Tebe during, uh, on the 18th to discuss methods, methods and mechanisms to address the issue of the conflict between Ethiopia and, and Somalia. I'm glad to inform you that uh, as a result of that uh, meeting, uh, 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 summit, emergency summit of IGAD, they will, uh, and there are steps that have been proposed uh, on how to resolve the issue between uh, uh, Ethiopia and Somalia. And then President Museveni will be handling that matter in the next uh, few days. On the matter of uh, Rwanda and, uh, and, and, and Burundi, similarly, that, one, that matter is being handled by East African Community Head of States. They have not co co called for a, a, a summit yet. But there is ongoing discussions among them, uh, virtually, they are, they are discussing uh, this matter because uh, President Museveni has been very busy with this matter. There was the swearing in of, of President Shikedi uh, around the corner, head of state was scattered all over the place. But I'm, I'm sure that uh, now that they are all at station uh, and, and talking amongst themselves, mm -hmm. uh, something will come out in the next uh, few days to resolve this matter. What is important about these conflicts is that as tensions it, run high. Is, is, this is what is it conf conf important about these conflicts is that uh, each uh, we as uh, regional countries and the head of states as who know each other well definitely do not want these conflicts. They think it's not desirable, and they'll do everything possible to resolve it. All right, Honorable. As we wind up your final remarks, uh, these meetings we are also. In my own view, uh, we are looking at uh, prosperity among these countries, are looking at uh, independence of these countries, but also a unit of purpose. Uh, for Uganda's case, let's speak uh, local here. Uh, we saw the East Africa Business Forum meeting that was also a side, side meeting, uh, looking at the trade and investment, but also issue of tourism, which is our comparative advantage as a nation. wasn't so, I didn't hear so, so many voices on this. Yet we even had bigger delegations here. Who do even market Uganda outside? Uh, how are we as a country positioned moving forward, especially in our comparative advantage of tourism and trade and industry? 
you did not read the you don't read this meeting properly. I you you did not read it properly. You see, the success which we can thumb our chest, okay, and pat our back, this success of uh, of Nam. During Nam, the internet, the world, the, the whole world, were looking to Uganda. The focus on is Uganda. Yes, I. To Uganda, and and uh, the amount of delegations that came were over and above our expectations, above our expectations, absolutely above our expectations. This dispelled the negative forces, the evil forces, who a few months ago were telling uh, to, uh, their, their investors and their, and their citizens not to come to Uganda. There's terrorists in Uganda. There's war in Uganda. Don't go to Uganda. They were evil forces. You are the people who are pub publishing these things by some countries, advising their citizens not to come to Uganda. These summits dispelled, absolutely dis dispelled that nonsense that they were publishing, saying Uganda is ready for business. Uganda is peaceful, absolutely peaceful. You can come to Uganda and enjoy uh, Uganda without fear of terrorism, without fear of, of, of attacks. And the, as a result of this, we're going to have investors coming in full force. We're going to have tourists, which you said are not coming. Now tourists are, are going to start booking in full time. We're going to have international conferences coming to use this new convention center, state-of-the-art convention center with unimaginable facilities. They're going to come in droves and drives. So I am so happy. I thumb my chest on behalf of President Museveni, Ugandans, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the, the Prime Minister, the Head of Public Service, and all the voluntary team that we did a fantastic fine, fine, fine. job. We should be proud. Watch this space. Uganda is doing fantastic. Words of Ladit Henry Okero Oriem, Minister of Foreign Affairs, his state for international relations, and we thank you for your time and also sharing these insights on the takeaways from the non-aligned, 19th non-aligned movement summit and the group of 77 plus, plus China uh, that was successfully held in Kampala at the Munyonyo Convention Center. On my own behalf and on behalf of the entire team, uh, we say thank you so much. I have now to uh, hand you back to Priscilla Regina and Chris Igeni for the closing remarks of morning at NTV. Stephen